TV is providing the candidates for the Board of Selectmen in the town of Duxbury this opportunity to let the voters get to know them. Each of the candidates will be given three minutes for a candidate statement wherein they will outline their campaign message. They will then be asked three questions and have three minutes to answer those questions. There are four candidates running for one position on the Board of Selectmen. We welcome Michael McGee. Good morning and uh, thank you Julie and thank you PAC TV for having me. Thank you. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You have three minutes. Good morning or good afternoon, Duxbury. And uh, I am Mike McGee. I'm running for uh, selectman uh, for the town of Duxbury for the special election on September 1st. A little bit about me. I'm a father of two children, ages four and six, who are in the Duxbury public school system. I'm also a prosecutor. I have been serving victims and families in Norfolk County since 2011, both as a trial prosecutor and also as an appellate prosecutor, arguing hundreds of cases before juries and judges, and also before the appellate courts and the Supreme Judicial Court, and more recently for the, appellate, uh, the parole boards and uh, Bridgewater State Hospital's mental health court. Uh, I am running in this race because I want to use my legal tools, my advocacy for public safety, and my commitment to public service, and my family's experiences to help during these challenging times in Duxbury. I love our town. I love our beaches. I love our historic neighborhoods and our antique homes, and I put my money where my mouth is. I bought a 300-year-old home, and I've been taking care of it with my wife. I also joined the local historic district committee, and I have been working with those folks to preserve our homes, uh, preserve our antique homes and historic homes. And I, I hope that in our uh, all uh, special town meeting that my home will be added to the Bradford district. Also, uh, like many working families, uh, I've been telecommuting uh, and I've been shopping local, I've been eating local, and we aren't going to Boston anymore to be shopping there. Uh, this great opportunity here in our neighborhood to improve our small business community uh, and to work with them and have them at the table when we talk about planning and congestion and traffic and to try to help our small businesses of us as best we can. I also love our neighborhood's uh, natural uh, treasures, our, our beaches, our forests. And speaking about the beach, I think there's great opportunity to improve our relationship with Duxbury Beach Reservation. They protect our coastline, they preserve our, our natural treasure out there. And I think that we need to have a resident to live driven solution to accessibility to Duxbury Beach. Uh, and that needs to be done in September, not in next May. Uh, we need to sit down with our community and come up with a better way to improve accessibility to Duxbury Beach. We also need to improve our education about what the reservation does for this community and all the money that they spend uh, and all the time they commit to protecting our, our beach from state takeover and protecting our coastline. They do a fabulous job out there. I also, uh, and this is a, a very pressing concern uh, that impacts, impacts our entire community. Uh, I'm also concerned about re-entry into our school program. There'll be another question about that and I'll speak about that later. Uh, but for now, as I'll ask you at the end, um, I ask humbly for your vote on September 1st. Uh, there'll be early voting, there'll be mail-in voting, and I hope that I can earn your support on September 1st. Thank you. Thank you. First question. As a result of the pandemic and the governor's order imposing strict limitations on people gathering, the town has not been able to conduct regular in-person board and committee meetings and has adapted to conduct meetings virtually. How do you think this delivery method has impacted the town and the residents' ability to participate? And do you see a hybrid version being utilized in the future once there is some semblance of normal? You have three minutes. I love this question, and absolutely. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, I've been seeing this play out in the courts uh, and in local government. Uh, the platforms that have been used as far as like WebEx or, or Zoom, um, they're creating, uh, they're allowing for more accessibility to town government, and that's great. Uh, it's not only safe to our seniors and our community, it's bringing family uh, members, uh, family, our families back into uh, local government uh, in, in a profound way. Uh, if you look at our school committee meetings, uh, they went from in-person meetings with about 15 people at them to last night, there were so many people on the Zoom call uh, for the school committee vote on re-entry uh, that they had an overflow, uh, more than 250 people on the Zoom call and more on the Facebook Live uh, that wanted to hear about the plans for school in the fall. Uh, and that's not possible uh, for a lot of folks that are taking care of their families, uh, driving kids to events um, in, in a pre-COVID uh, atmosphere. Um, 
that what this allows people to do uh, is simply shut off their uh, their video, mute themselves, and and take participate in uh, in community meetings, um, and even hand off the phone or the or the computer to their spouse so that they can take notes. Um, those are things that aren't possible with a solely in person uh, meeting atmosphere. I think we have a great opportunity uh, to create an environment where people are educated and know things before town meeting. Um, and it also keeps town more accountable uh, and more transparent um, as the year goes by and all these monthly meetings and weekly meetings uh, take place. It, it allows not only people to participate uh, as they're happening, uh, but you folks from PAC TV have streaming media. Uh, re, uh, you also uh, ar archive uh, many meetings um, and it, it allows people to watch um, finance committee meetings at three in the morning if they want to, uh, whenever they want, um, they can participate and be knowledgeable about what's going on. And I think going forward, and I, I will go is going forward as your next selectman, I'll work with our community uh, to educate our public on how best to use these tools, uh, try to make them improve them uh, and make them uh, more accessible to folks so that we can make town hall more accessible uh, going forward. I think that's a, it's a huge thing for our community and, and I look forward to helping with that. Thank you. Second question. What are your thoughts on presenting an override for the voters' consideration in the form of a debt exclusion ballot question to fund the construction of a new DPW building and finish the repairs of the entire 4,000 feet of the seawall? In addition, what are your thoughts to an override in the form of a ballot question to fund an operational override for certain portions of the operating budget, such as public safety budgets like fire, police, DPW, and or the school department? You have three minutes. Thank you, and that's, uh, that's a lot. Um, but in Duxbury, uh, we have a community-driven budget process, uh, and uh, we, we decide our budget at town meeting. Uh, our voters, our public decide that, uh, and our public expects a lot. They expect to be educated, and they expect to know what, where their dollars are going. Uh, and to that end, um, the public has not had an appetite uh, for uh, overrides generally. Uh, to the extent they uh, support overrides uh, historically. Um, the debt exclusion override uh, for a specific project has had a little bit more appetite uh, because it's, it's got a finite period uh, that the bonds end when the payment ends uh, and that the budget would return to uh, where it was before uh, the override as opposed to a general override, which uh, at the end of the payments on the bond, uh, another bond could simply come in uh, for another project. Um, speaking specifically to the uh, seawall, um, again, uh, there hasn't been uh, a community-wide uh, support uh, to repair or replace the, uh, the, the seawall. Um, for that to be uh, accepted or, or even presented at a town meeting, uh, our finance committee, uh, our town uh, has to really have their arms wrapped around the actual costs, have to exhaust negotiations with the uh, and to present it and, uh, and educate the public well before town meeting uh, so that they know exactly where their dollars are going to be spent on this and why they're doing it. Uh, and whether it's uh, for the accessibility to the beach, to protect the homes, to protect our coastline, um, those are important issues, but the town has to know where their dollars are being spent and why they're being spent. Uh, additionally, and, and then the same vein, um, I think there's a, an understanding, and I, I live next door next door to the DPW lot, uh, there's an understanding uh, that it's, in, it's, it's not acceptable for our millions of dollars in equipment to be kept in garages that are falling apart and in makeshift tents. It's not acceptable for our employees who are asking to serve this community to be repairing and starting equipment in New England weather outside. Um, however, uh, it has also been not uh, appetizing to the public to spend $19 million on a garage. Uh, I think that as we go forward, I would work with our DPW employees uh, to come up with a plan or a presentation um, that uh, protects our equipment uh, and protects our employees so that they can serve our community in a, in a cost efficient manner uh, during these challenging times. Uh, these are challenging times. We have to work within our means to efficiently serve our community. Thank you. Third question. 
Currently, there is no cure or vaccine for COVID-19. Students are expected to resume classes in mid-September and the reopening plans will be chosen between full-time in-person, full-time virtual learning and or a hybrid of the two. Given the three models being contemplated, how does this relate to the town's reopening plans? You have three minutes. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, it is uh, the most pressing concern that our community faces, not just our parents, our seniors, our community at large is going to be impacted by their re-entry into the school system. Our economy, everything uh, is impacted by our re-entry into the school system. And this is personal to me. Uh, I am the father of two children who will be entering the school system. I'm the only candidate that is running in this race that is a parent of school age children. I am sending two children into a school system during a pandemic. It's incredibly challenging. Uh, and it's been incredibly challenging as a working parent to have two children at my feet, to have to work out um, alternate plans for care of my children. My wife works as well. Um, we are doing it and we're, we're getting through this. And uh, like many families, um, we have overcome some of those challenges, uh, but it's not getting any better. Um, and as far as a re-entry program, uh, the school department and the superintendent and our school committee have done a fantastic job with the hand that they have been dealt with. Um, they are working to, to keep our community safe, our teachers safe, our children safe, and I'm proud uh, of their work. I think that is, they've done an excellent job. To that end, last night, uh, the school committee approved a hybrid uh, school plan. Um, they, an in-person plan would simply not be, uh, a full in-person plan would simply not work under the uh, state regulations right now. Uh, what was approved last night uh, essentially is that two, your child will go to school for two days a week, uh, will be at home learning for two days a week, and we'll have one day of independent uh, work. Obviously for working families, that's untenable um, and that's gonna be a challenge. Uh, but uh, what I am hopeful for uh, is that so long as we have our families going through those doors for the first time since March 13th, that we can build off of that. Uh, I am hopeful for our future. Uh, our children need to be educated. Um, but number one, our community needs to be safe. Our seniors need to be safe. Our community at large, our children absolutely need to be safe. And that's a priority of mine. However, I think we need to build off of this, learn from it, find out what's working, what's not. And I look forward as your next selectman, to working with the school committee, working with the, the superintendent and working with our, our, our school department as a whole uh, to make sure that we can bring our children back to school in a safe manner and protect our teachers, seniors, and, and families in town here. Um, and uh, thank you very much. And again, I ask for your vote on September 1st. Thank you, that was Michael McGee. Please remember to vote in the town election scheduled to be held on Tuesday, September 1st. I'm Julie Thompson for PAC-TV. Stay informed, keep it local, good day.